been back here mostly all my days. I used to fish and hunt back here when I was small. So I remember it, it was beautiful. You know, they had all the trees that that's now gone because of saltwater intrusion. You know, had kids, we used to come back here and catch turtles and snakes and baby gators and little turtles about the size of a half a dollar and sell them for 50 and 60 cents a piece to the pet shop stores and stuff. All this is gone now. Every stump that's in here now was a live cypress tree from 65 back. From 65 till now, they gradually start dying away. And they had people living back here, you know, on houses, floating houses, and stilts and things. It was pure cypress swamp here before the 70s. It gradually, you know, died out. It didn't die out instantly. Know, maybe about 15 years it was dead, you know. In the late 60s and the beginning of the 70s, they dug a canal they called the Mississippi River Gulf out there and they crossed it by UB Avenue in the marshland. And by UB Avenue, they used to go all the way. You used to come stand on 11 for your eyes to see was too below swamp. Except so when they start cutting across the swamps in the marshland, making navigational canals, saltwater intrusion came in and caused this to start dying out. But all this is part of what made this hurricane be so large is because all the coastline eroded away and it's easier for a strong, strong hurricane to take shorter time for it to come in the city and tear it up now. So all this have to be repaired to have it slowed down to like it used to be. If it was a category six and marsh land was here, have it so many miles of marsh land, cut the sewage of water down so many feet as we come in from, from the Gulf of Mexico. So if the coastline, coastline continue on eroding away, even a weak storm is gonna give us a problem because we don't have no protection. The entire wetland complex has been suffering from severe degradation for the past 50 years, ever since they constructed Mr. Go, the Mississippi River Gulf outlet. Currently, the Mr. Go has been decommissioned, and so we're hoping to see some changes in our bayou. But what that essentially meant is that back about 50 years ago, this was a healthy cypress swamp, and now it's degraded to a brackish water and mostly open water. A lot of the cypress couldn't handle the salt. So what our research team is doing um, is, to, is trying to figure out how we can restore this area back to a cypress swamp if possible um, so that it can provide storm protection for the neighborhood as well as providing um, food opportunities and recreation opportunities for the residents. This summer uh, our focus has been on trying to get some kind of pilot or demonstration uh, material in and the group have put in these floating mats and they've put in some uh, containers to look at different kinds of marsh grasses as well as cypress seedlings to see how they do uh, in this environment. And I think uh, having those uh, visible demonstrations are uh, something that inspires people in the community as well as ourselves uh, in terms of the long range restoration of this wetland. Basically the objective of the day was to try to do a um, wetland demonstration project small scale for a small budget, but something hands-on that this year's group of students could do to um, demonstrate wetland restoration and get the community involved. And so basically what we did this morning is we planted two 35 square foot floating rafts, which are actually made of this matrix of recycled plastic from, you know, water bottles and such. Um, and each of the rafts had about 50 holes, which are wicking chambers, and that's where we actually planted the plugs of these three different brackish marsh wetland species. On one raft, we broke them up into zones, and the other we just did a random planting, and that was to try to see how the plants do it in a monoculture versus a competition planting. So with the rafts, um, the plants aren't planted directly into the soil, they're planted into this this matrix but the roots can go through like it's this matrix of all these fibers the roots will go through and they'll create a, a root mass that's actually underneath the raft and if the roots grow long enough and if the water is shallow enough they can actually root into the soil and so there might be some hopes of these rafts actually um, rooting down and becoming something permanent um, but what we heard from the floating wetlands guys is that because it's hydroponically grown the roots have a much greater surface area of exposure with the water as well as the nutrients in the water. And so they actually do, I think they said one raft, 35 square foot, basically does the function of one acre of wetland, which is, which is pretty amazing. And so 
who knows, we're just experimenting to see what kind of plants are going to be able to survive in the current conditions of the bayou until salinity levels can lower. Um, and the ultimate hope and vision that the community has is that we can ultimately restore this into a cypress tupelo swamp. But it's going to take a while for the salt to get out of the water. It's going to take a while for the salt to get out of the soil. And so we're trying to see what we can do now to restore some of the environmental functions of the bayou and provide biodiversity and as well as the conditions that um, will create better conditions for cypress tupelo, which means creating biomass, building up these landforms, and uh, decreasing our water depth on the edges so we can create some areas for, for new planting. One of the really special aspects of this 427 acres is its proximity, uh, not only to the Lower Ninth Ward, but to downtown New Orleans, so that the um, closeness for people to see a wetland or coastal restoration in progress will provide the impetus for doing larger uh, coastal restoration projects uh, along the Gulf Coast. The uh, wetland here can serve as a environmental outdoor laboratory. It's a scale that is daunting sometimes, but uh, relative to even the 28,000 acres of the Central Wetlands Unit, it is still relatively small and uh, I think very doable if the, there's a coalition of government agencies and nonprofits and community that uh, want to have it happen, and then it can happen.